Hey there, buddy. This is Bradzilla. And uh, today I am working on a Spyro the Dragon piece that I'm going to take you through. I was lucky because what I wanted to do here, um, I didn't really want to put him into any particular you know, place in the games. I just had this idea for um, like a crystal cave since gems are such a big, big part of the game. And I'm like, hey, I want to try drawing a gemstone. So this was good practice for that. Um, I really liked in the, uh, the brand new games how he's got this cute little poised um, sort of standard pose where all of his feet are just tucked right up under him even though he's you know ready to move at a moment's notice here. So I worked really hard to make sure the pose that I uh, used really captured just that. There are so many versions of Sparks. I really had a hard time figuring out what I wanted to do, but I really, I just went with the super simple, like oldest version of him. Some of them have like arms and voice actors. It really gets the whole thing pretty complicated. Here I'm starting to sketch over the, um, or rather, I'm trying to do the lines over the sketch layer. I do this on a different layer. Makes things easier, then you can just make the, the sketch invisible. Oh, if anyone's curious, I'm using a uh, program called Procreate. I use my, uh, my iPad for this. I only just got the iPad pretty recently. I'd been wanting one for for a long time, and uh, it's made things really nice because I can draw like right on the screen. I'm not sponsored by Apple in any way. I just I'm really excited about it. That's all. I try to do my best to make sure all the lines connect. It makes a uh, the next step with uh, doing all the color fill. Really easy. I don't always succeed, but uh, usually doesn't take too much to find where the leaking is. Yeah, see, I, I just made the sketch layer invisible. I don't really delete it just in case I ever want it again. Oh yeah, this one needed a background. Slap that background right in here. You can see how simple it is. Simple but effective. But you can really see it when when you see it actually being made. Kind of like hot dogs, you know. Oh, here we go. This is that color fill I was telling you guys about. And when the whole background goes purple like that, it means I've messed up my lines and I need to fix it. Or just do it by hand, which is what I'm doing here. Now the point of this is really just to get every pixel that you want color on filled in. Doesn't matter with what color. I chose purple because it's mostly purple anyway. Um, but this means that you can alpha lock the layer so that you really can't color outside the lines. It makes things a lot simpler later. So much of digital art is just trying to make, your, uh, make stuff easier for you. I had a lot of fun with the gem. It's just so many straight, angly lines. I didn't really have to be too careful.
Maybe I should have, but ah, I like how it turned out. One of the reasons I chose Spyro um, is that he's just got such an absolutely compelling character design. I'm convinced that's one of the reasons that he's done so well, you know, longevity-wise. Um, it's simple, but it's incredibly strong. Um, he's got a really recognizable, like, silhouette, color palette. You know, you can look at any part of him and instantly know, oh, Spyro. And that goes for most of his iterations. Um, like his, his first design. Okay, yeah, that's classic. I love how he was reimagined in the Reignited trilogy. I think that worked out really well, I think. Um, Skylanders? Well, I honestly didn't really care for that design at all. I thought they made his face look kind of... It was really narrow. It was really pinched right at the front. It kind of reminded me of a snake, which would normally be a selling point for me. I love snakes. But uh, it just wasn't Spyro anymore. It just... The Skylander's idea is amazing um, and obviously very lucrative. It just never needed to be Spyro at all. I think it was a strong enough idea that it could have stood alone without some kind of, you know, existing franchise behind it. It just almost seemed like slapping Spyro in there was just for convenience. Just to get it a little bit of brand recognition. But, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, it doesn't mean that it takes away from you know, the joy of the original games at all. Those still exist. That's how I view a lot of sequels. Uh, whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether you like it or don't, it doesn't mean that the original is any less, you know, any less good, any less meaningful. I mean, heck, you could go play it right now if you wanted to, whether you like, whether you like a sequel or not. That goes for movies too, I think. I'm starting to block in Spyro's color here. So you can see with the alpha lock on, I really don't have to worry about coloring outside the lines unless it's, you know, interfacing directly with another part of him. So like on the outside edges of things? Oh yeah, now that's easy. I try not to use a pure black for pupils. I think that just gives a little bit more life, a little more warmth to the eye. Like, really, black is a super powerful color. I try to use it as little as possible. It just usually ends up being too strong if I slap a black right in there. Oh, starting to block in the shadows here. You can see I don't really use a gray for that. I just use a darker, darker version of that. It gives that, that orange there. It gives everything a kind of... Well, there's a lot more color involved in the whole thing. It makes things less muddy late, later. When you're putting in shadows, you got to put a lot of thought into where the light source is. In this case, there are two that are acting on Spyro. The biggest is that big old gem right there. Which is glowing because, well, because I wanted it to, really. Um, the other is Sparks, which we will see later. I actually use different um, like smudge brushes. It's essentially a smudge tool with uh, different brush effects in order to uh, 
blend. I kind of like the sloppy, non-precise uh, nature of it. It, it kind of reminds me more of actual, like, traditional painting, which is which is more to my more to my background. My background painting, not the background of the actual piece. go. Sparks is getting some color. See, I did a lot of detail on Sparks here, but when I put the glow in, it just uh, it drowned a lot of that out, which I thought was a shame. See, I didn't really like that glow effect. There we go. Nebula. Very nice. So I'm, I'm dropping in the light that's coming off of Sparks now. Well, and a little from the gem. A lot from the gem. Because I'm doing this on a different layer than the base colors, it doesn't have that nice alpha lock. So I did add a wall lines a little bit. But that's alright, you just go over it with an eraser. By the way, speaking of um, dragon designs, something I, my, like my favorite part, favorite part of the new uh, Ignited Trilogy was Spyro's Dragon Dads. Oh my god, I had so much fun. My favorite part, favorite part, was, um, was finding new dragon statues to free. That was the best. Because all of them had such incredibly unique designs. I still, to this day, wonder where all the lady dragons are. But, uh... Just, I don't know. Maybe dragons just reproduce by budding or something. Those, those buds are the eggs, I guess. They're not really eggs. They're just sort of buds that came off of the dad dragons. Uh, this is a trick I learned where you put a color over the entire... The entire picture, right on the very top layer. And um, you turn the opacity down and uh, fiddle with the, the lighting effects. And it will really unify whatever color palette you've done. You know, so if you're, if you're worried your colors really aren't matching, this helps. It's not a perfect fix, and it's certainly not a uh, substitute for not knowing basic color theory. But by gum, it helps. And I lost a little bit of Sparks' lighting. I had to add in some more. Doing the touch-ups here, adding little shadows, making the background a little deeper in a few places. That's right, I was going to do some last-minute touch-ups for... Spyro's skin. Add some like little scaling patterns. So when you look at his new uh, design, I think his old one too, but he's got some like darker scale patches. Okay, 
And there we go. Quick recap. So you can see it uh, all much, 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 fa much, much faster. And without all the zooming in. By the way, guys, thank you all so much for watching this. Um, this was a lot of fun to make. I plan on making many more. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be able to see the final version in just a sec here. Voila! I hope you all enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. Uh, look forward to more in the future.